Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we letter a new project every week. And we have a new project for you all and I'm super excited because this is it. We're going to be going through the ABCs but in rainbow form. So there are... Rainbow form is one of my favorite forms. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Today it is. <laughs> Um, so there are five different steps we're going to go through that I wanted to first say. So the first one is, although we're doing the ABCs, this is a lettering tutorial. So I want to be able to help you learn a lot of different things all in one video. So we're going to first start with the numbers. That's step one. Step two is we're going to go through the lowercase ABCs actually and connect them. Step three is we're going to lay out the project. So these actually, I don't know where the other one is. Okay, so this is step three. Step four is that I'm going to show you how, if you notice on here, there's a rainbow of colors. On my palette, there's only three colors. So how do you make a rainbow of colors? That's gonna be step four. We're gonna do a color wheel and I'm gonna show you how you can mix colors. Um, and then step five is we're gonna do the whole thing and then we're also gonna add in gold. So you'll notice this special K. Special K. <laughs> is gold for Keenan. For Keenan. <laughs> um, so those are the five different steps. Also, I wanna say that these Practice sheets are available on our website at letsmakeart.com. If you go to this kit section on the, under the lettering tab, you'll be able to see um, all the kits, find the ABCs one, rainbow ABCs, and you can download this for free. So the, like I said, we only have three colors. And first one is Magenta. Oops, I didn't have enough on here. Okay, so color one's magenta. Color two, deep yellow. Color three is Tahoe blue. So those are the three supplies. The other thing is that if you don't have watercolors and you just have maybe you have brush pens, you can totally do this project and go through the lessons that we're gonna be going through with any supplies. So don't feel like you have to have these exact supplies. Um, I'm gonna be going through, I wanna show you how to use both of the different types of brushes that you have. If you have a subscription box, um, these both are in there, but you can use any size. So this is a medium aquash brush, and this is a round zero, round, round zero Princeton brush. So those are the two brushes, and then also, the fun one is we are going to be using gold gouache. So I'll go into that a little bit more detail, but that's what the gold is. That's a little bit thicker paste if you have our box. And then the last thing I suggest to have is because we're going to be, do be doing a rainbow of colors, I suggest having two different uh, cups of water, nothing special, just regular water. Um, I suggest having two different ones so we can clean out our brushes. Okay. So filtered water is not required. <laughs> Unfiltered, filtered, sparkling. Perfect. Sparkling. <laughs> That'd be interesting. We should try that. We should try that. I wonder what would happen. And then it's, we tried and it's just nothing. <laughs> um, okay, so first we're going to go through the numbers. So if you want, you can either follow directly and draw directly on this paper. This is just computer paper. Or if you want, you can use one of your practice sheets from uh, your watercolor paper. Oh, I didn't mention that. The watercolor paper that I'm using is the Canson XL, and I'm gonna be using that for the final project. So, actually I'll use some of this. When you are looking at this sheet, you will notice it's really faint, and there's a reason why, because I want you to trace over it, but what's happening is that there's an arrow that I drew and then little dots. So it's showing what direction to go in. And so with lettering, what's happening is that there's thin lines and there's thick lines. And so the reason why is when your hand is moving up, it's gonna be a thin line. So I'll practice and show you on here. 
So when I'm going up, it's a thin line. Excuse my Band-Aid. Um, when it's, oh man, oh well. Okay, when it's going up, it's a thin line. And when it's going down, it's a thick line. So no matter what, if you want to use this brush or if you want to use this one. So what's happening also, either way, is I'm just gonna get a little bit of water. You don't want it to be drenching. But even though these are liquid watercolors, you just wanna add a little bit just to get it going. So you could still create a thin line and you can still create a thick line. So it's cool because I, you can dictate how thick you want the line depending on how big your round is. So you have the choice to do that, where use whichever one you want. Is the aquash brush tip felt or is it like brush? It's, um, what's it called? Synthetic? Plastic. It's, it feels like plastic. I'll look it up and then we can write it out. Okay. Because it is, it, it is different. Bris um, okay. The bristles are different. These are synthetic. Yes. Synthetic sable, I believe. Um, okay, so let me get a little bit of water. When you are doing this, so if you notice that when I was going through this, I ran out it just ran out really easily. So what I suggest to do if that ever happens to you is just for these, because it's such a small brush, really get the whole thing loaded up rather than oftentimes, I'm gonna be talking about this brush and I don't get the whole thing because it's so big, so I don't need to get that much. So I'm gonna go thick on the down. So I'm following this arrow and I'm gonna follow, I'm gonna go thick on the down. What I want you to think about is how thick do you want this to be? So maybe if you go thin on the up, you also can just make this a little bit thicker. It doesn't have to be the full amount of range, but I want you to go through this practice sheet because you will be able to really see with your hand how much pressure you can apply and what you can create. So if I want to get a really thick one on this one, I'm gonna go thin on the up and then I'm gonna push and get a really thick thick. So you'll notice that I'm pushing the bristles and they're flaring out. Rather than if I choose to do this a little bit thinner, I'm gonna go thin on the up and then just press maybe medium amount of pressure. When you are rounding out the curves here, so I'm gonna do the bottom of the five, I'm gonna skip around a little bit, is if you notice, Keenan, can you, well, when, um, just have the side camera for this one. Um, if you look at my brush, so I'm going thin on the up, I'm just using the tip. And then when I push, I'm, like I said, I'm using the bristles and I'm, they're flaring. And then I'm going to get to the tip of the brush to make that curve. That was really thin. But what I'm trying to show, maybe I'll show it on here so you can see, is instead of whenever you have a curved shape, is what I don't, what I would like you to avoid is this. And if you notice my bristles did that, that's gonna get super frustrating. Or sometimes what might happen is you do this and it wants to do this and it flips and does its own thing. Sometimes it can work, sometimes it can't. Um, so what you can do instead is think about the amount of pressure. So when I say release pressure, I'm not telling you to physically lift up. I'm telling you to be mindful about the amount of pressure that you're applying. So if I go thin on the up, thick on the down, I'm gonna slowly get to the tip by the time I make that curve. So that will help you if you ever feel, so my biggest tip is if you ever feel like this brush is doing its own thing, I want you to be aware of that and then the next time you do it how can you change it up can you release pressure a little bit earlier a little bit later and that'll help you to figure out how to master this brush because um, the main thing is that you think about it as you want to be able to control it rather than it doing whatever it wants to do so i know you can do it um, those are a few tips for that so go through and maybe you experiment do you want to do some with if you have a little bit of a bigger brush so again, it's the same thing where I'm gonna go thick on the down. So it's the same, actually, this is a perfect one to do. I'm slowly getting to the tip of this by the time I make that curve. Because if I were to not think about it, it would smush all together and not look like anything. The other thing when you're going through the numbers is you'll notice that 
the horizontal lines, so on the seven here, on the four, on the top of the five, those are thin. So typically, so it's thin on the up, strong on the down. Right. <laughs> um, horizontal, you can choose. I typically tend to make them thinner, but if you want your letters or your numbers, whichever one you're doing, to have a little bit more heavy weight to it, you can choose to make them thicker. Your choice. Um, so go through that. Then the step two is on this side of the sheet, I drew the lowercase alphabet. So you'll notice that there are the same lot arrows here where I show the direction to go in to help you get accustomed to that. The other thing is that I connected these. So I'm gonna go back to my thinner round. So again, this is the round zero. And <coughs> ooh, um, let me switch up colors. And I was like, I have a little, no, I don't want to drink. <laughs> you want me to drink that? You were joking. Am I? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to follow the arrow. So I'm going to go thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up. So this is perfect. And actually all of these first three letters have that curve that we were doing. So this is a perfect way to practice. So it's the opposite of this where I'm going to go thin on the up, thick on the down, and I'm gonna to start to release pressure to get on that tip. And I'm gonna go thick on the down, then on the up. So what I want you to do is I want you to take this slow. With lettering, it's a little bit different where I want you to be mindful and take it stroke by stroke. So that way I'm not just going directly into, so if I were to do this in one stroke and just go directly into it, one, you might run out of ink, and you also just kind of forget everything that you were just learning of the different stroke sizes. So when you were doing the C, so we did, this was the backward C because that was part of the five. So if I were to do the C and the D, the other thing that I want you to look at is that you will notice that this same stroke is you'll see it here, you see it here, you see it here, you see it here and here. So you will notice that what you're creating is actually a building up of specific strokes. And that actually, we have a, if you go to um, our YouTube or Facebook, you'll see a beginner lettering series. And there's a sheet that you can download that has the foundation strokes. So if you wanna go through that, that'll help you to also continue to gain that muscle memory. But, so what I was saying is this was the opposite C, or the backward C. So if this is the C, and I'm going thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up, what you can be mindful of is where you start to release the pressure. So if I do it too late, it will look like that. And if I even do it too early, it would look like that. So I know that it's, it's frustrating because you wanna do it really quickly and you don't want to have to think about it. But if you allow yourself to think of this, you're taking the time to do something for yourself and you're taking the time to learn something and learning, well, I know learning's frustrating if you don't get it right away, we all, we all feel that. Um, but allow yourself to understand that you're creating something, that we say this in the oath, is you're creating something with your own two hands and that's special. So allow yourself to be a kid here. That's why this is a perfect one because it's rainbow. Um, it's supposed to be fun. So just want to preface that. If you also are a lefty, and I understand that lefties um, can get frustrated because one of the smearing, and then two, they just it's a little bit different. What I want you to think about is what I say is rotate your paper a little bit and also especially if you're practicing, let's say we're just practicing the C and you're trying to figure out your amount of pressure. Do it once and then notice, okay, what can I change? So I did that once and it got a little wonky right there. So maybe on the next one, let me try and smooth out that part. So when I'm going, I'm gonna go thin on the up to be more mindful about this transition right there. So then if you ever are shaky, if you're right-handed or left-handed and you feel a little bit shaky, here's a trick. Do it really slow and then do it really fast. 
just to get out of your system. Then tell yourself, okay, just slow down just a little bit. And if I slow down just a little bit, I can find a happy medium. So go the extreme ends of it, and then it'll be a little bit easier to find the middle. Then, that's like from learning kids, or from, from learning kids, <laughs> from, <laughs> from teaching kids. Oh, I gotcha. learned that from teaching kids that if you I give them- I also like to learn kids. <laughs> if you show them the other, not that you all are kids, <laughs> because maybe there are kids watching, but I learned that it's helpful whenever you're teaching someone to give them two, two opposites so then they can find the middle because sometimes you don't know what your extreme is. Smart. Okay. The other thing I'm gonna skip around a little bit is when you are going through this, like I said, take it stroke by stroke and not do it really fast. And you will help to notice that. So if I'm gonna do a thick downstroke on here, if I take it stroke by stroke, I can then decide how thick I want it. So by me going slower, that's pretty thick. So what if on this one I just apply medium pressure, but then my thin is still thin. So let's do medium pressure. And then maybe on this one, I'm gonna do really thick pressure. So it's cool because you can experiment and see the ranges that this brush can create. So you can tell I still applied heavier down on here, but this was my heaviest. So if you want, if you can want to experiment and get to know whichever brush you have, maybe you have, maybe you have the round two even from the watercolor group. Um, you can experiment with that but see the ranges that you can get. So experiment with how thin you can get and then how thick you can get. And then whenever you do this, and I know I've said this before, but I really wanna emphasize, if you ever smush your brush, it's okay. Because if you roll it out, you can get back to your tip. So don't worry if it gets like that, you can fix it. Um, okay, so Go through all of this on your own. Then, like I said, this is just computer paper also I should preface. I've said this, if you've been with us for the brush pen projects, I've, I've been more focused on um, your brush pens will fray if you use computer paper. So that's why we suggest using a specific and a, a nicer type of computer paper. When you are doing watercolors, the beautiful thing about these brushes is that you don't have to feel like you have to take as much care from these. I've had brushes like these for so long and they don't fray. I don't wanna say at all because I'm sure they will eventually, but they don't fray as fast for sure. And if you think about it, watercolor paper is it has a toothy texture anyway. So it's used to all that. So don't feel like you have to be so focused on the right type of paper. The only thing is some computer paper, I'm sure this is, I don't even think this is nice computer paper. If it bleeds too much, that might be the only frustrating thing, but if you notice, I'm totally okay, and this is just for practice. So, just wanted to preface that, okay. It's good muscle memory practice too, though. Yeah, totally. Thanks, Keenan. You're welcome. Okay, we are now going to do, where is it, oh, right here your layout. So after you've done the lowercase ABCs and your numbers, then you can decide, do you want your final project to be, maybe you want these to be numbers, maybe you want these to be the lowercase ABCs. You get to choose. I, want, I wanted to show different options and leave creative freedom up to you. I'm going to show you, since this was the final project, doing it with the uppercase ABCs, so you're also learning <coughs> bubble something new. <laughs> um, so what you can do is you have options. I like to have a template and then I'm going to draw my whole ABCs out so that I can do it first rather than just blindly going for it. So that makes me feel better. So that's why I do it this way. Um, yeah, I was going to say when I designed this, I remember thinking, that if you want, you can do this and there's still five. So you can mimic it and do the same thing here. When you are doing this, you can either do it in pencil or with your brush. But I'm just gonna do it in pencil first. So I'm just lightly sketching out and it made me think of 
there were a couple, when I was experimenting with what I wanted the final project to look like, I was playing with, it could look cool if, and maybe someone wants to do this, if you want to play with the levels. So if maybe for example, your A was a lot higher and your B was a lot lower, and then you kind of rotate, maybe I'll just do that just to show. So they all don't have to fit exactly in this guideline. This was just what it's called a guideline to help you get you started. And also if you want to experiment, your ABCs don't look, have to look like this. Maybe you have a different way that you do each letter. And I would absolutely love to see that. So when you're doing this, I realized that, so what's happening is that I did it and I ran out of, or I have too much room over here. So I'm just going to erase it really quickly. So this is also your chance. So you're, what you're doing is you're, you're becoming a designer. You're designing your own project and figuring out the layout of it. So now I know that. Also, before I forget, tip. Don't leave your brushes in the water. I, mean, I thought about this because I realized this was right here. I, these, I don't know all brushes. I can't speak for all brushes, but I know, especially when it comes to lettering, that over time, if you just leave it in there, it will bend and then it's, it's not horrible, but it's just a little bit harder to bend back, at least for these ones. Oh, I just sprayed it on myself. Classic. Classic <laughs> Um, With these ones, I don't really know because I've never really tried. I just know that with these ones, that will happen. So, tip. Okay. When, so I know that I need to start a little bit more over to account for that, J -J -K -L -M. so maybe you add, I guess I added a little loop on here. And um, again, you don't have to do the uppercase, you can also do the lowercase. And you will notice I'm not making this very perfect. Ooh, ampersand, so you can play with ampersand. So I do mine like that, maybe you do it like that, or I've done it like that, or you just write, and. Those are some different ways you can mix it up, but I'll do it the same way. Okay, that's my template. So you have two options. One is you can go for it, and if you want, you can eyeball it, and just, this was your first try and go at it. If you want, you can just do it directly on or you can go for your brush and go for it. Actually, there's three options. That's one option. Option two is you lightly sketch out, again, with your pencil, or you draw your guidelines, and you just do it directly on here. But for this one, I'm gonna show you and show you what I tip, typically like to do, is I really like to use a light box. So for this one, I'm gonna do that. And a light box is just a, Cool. I was gonna call it a machine. Machine. <laughs> Technology. Tool. Tool, thank you. Where it's just light that shines up. So if you don't have a light box, you can either use a window, you just need a, so a light source that shines through something that you can lay flat on. So another tool or tip that we've found is if um, you use a glass cooking dish and you flip it upside down and then you shine your flashlight, prob yeah. It has to be on your phone. I was like, you can use any flashlight. You can, because it won't. You could use a shallow headlamp. Oh! But you'd have to have a headlamp. <laughs> Someone takes a picture of a headlamp, a headlamp underneath. A... <laughs> um, so there's options if you don't have a light box. Um, but I'm going to use that. So the reason why is I want to gift to the Stikinen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I want to make sure it looks correctly or works correctly. Otherwise, I, if I was just practicing, I probably wouldn't use the light box. Um, the other cool thing is that you can, I'm going to move this up a little bit. So what I suggest is when you are doing this, if you also want to make this as a project, you will notice on here that 
the K is a little shimmy, shimmer, shimmy. Shimmy. Shimmy is a little shimmer. It's a little bit of a shimmy there. Um, so the reason why is the gold gouache that I explained in the beginning. So I will save that for the end, but the reason why I bring it up now is when you're going through your rainbow letters, what I suggest is to leave one letter of maybe the person you want to gift this to. So this is a really cool, maybe if you have a baby shower coming up or if you want to gift it to your daughter or your son, um, maybe you make their the initial of their first name special. So that's for you. Thanks. <laughs> um, okay, now you're probably wondering, okay, Nicole, get to the watercolor part where I can do the colors. So we started with these three colors. To make a rainbow, I'm going to give you all a little color, color, quick color lesson. Blue, red, so this is magenta more or less, but red, uh, let me think. I'm just going to use this again. So this is magenta plus blue. I got excited. Well, that's fine. It doesn't matter the order, actually, that I teach you. Okay. So these are technically the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow, but I really like the shade of magenta, so that's why I wanted to give that to you guys. Um, so this is kind of an, oh, I wasn't thinking. Well, oh, well. The reason why I'm... <laughs> the reason why I made that noise is I wanted this to be for cool colors. I does, it honestly doesn't really matter. It's, right. it's fine. Um, so those are your three colors to start with. Except it, you know what? I probably knew this might happen. Nice. Switcheroo, because I have yellow on here. So this is gonna be my warm colors for red and yellow and I'm gonna keep this for blue. So. Those are your three main colors. Now what we're gonna do, what I was saying was, if you saw what I did earlier was I mixed, I added a little bit of magenta and a little bit of blue. Guess what? We made purple. Actually, that's not purple. That is a deeper blue. And the reason why is because I had too much blue. So if you look at this, hold on. I need to show, not talk about it. There we go. Whoops. So it's more like that. So what happened was I had just a little bit tad more blue, so that's why the blue overpowered. So technically, if you had an even amount of these two, it would create a purple. I'll just leave this for my purple. So if you want to create a more a warmer purple, add more magenta. If you want to create a cooler purple, add more blue. Then let's keep going around the circle. So yellow and blue. So yellow, maybe I'd be more mindful, two drops. Yellow and blue. make green. There you go. So again, if I wanted to make it more in here, I would add a drop more of blue. That might have not been enough. Well, that's ever so slightly. If I were to just add a little bit more, so it creates more of a blue green, or if I wanted to create more of a yellow green, like an olive, I can add more yellow to it. The, so then, do you know what color you get from there? I'm sure you do. If you make mix pink Yellow and, and magenta. Oh, it's your favorite, one of your favorite colors. It is? Orange? Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna, God's nailed it. <laughs> um, sunset orange. There we go, so I mixed magenta and yellow. Ta-da! There's your rainbow.
So, you have a couple options when doing your rainbow lettering. You can start out and create, that's why, one of the reasons why I wanted to give you guys, if you have our subscription box, this circle palette, is that you can create your wells and maybe you create the in-betweens as well if you'd like, and you create your own palette from that and you go for it. What you can also do is, okay. So I'm gonna start with, and show you the other way you can do it. Also, the other reason why for this project I wanted to do this um, with a light box is that then I'm just focusing on the mixing of the colors rather than focusing on so much my spacing and layout of everything. So, Nope, that's orange. Start with magenta or the red that you have. Also, when I may make my A, some people do, how do you draw your A? Do you think you go down, down? Yes. That's typically how people do it. I don't know why I'm weird and I go up, down. So I go thin on the up thick on the down. Oh. I'm a little weird, so you can make it thick, thick. But I think it's because I like the variance. I don't know, there's no right or wrong. So whatever you like to do. But I just wanna explain that I do that a little bit differently. So if you do the first one with the strong color, and what if you just pick up just a little bit of your, what was this, this was my orange? That's maybe too much. So if you draw it and you realize that was not not close enough to this guy, the, this original color, just go back and maybe you take this other well. We're just gonna mix them together so that, there we go. I like that. So I'm just looking for a very slight variation. And I realize I drew that very low. So I'm gonna play with my layout on this one just to show you. So then maybe we pick up, I'm gonna use and keep with this guy. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit more orange. Your A looks like it's turning away from the rest of the letters. Because <laughs> I love how you can see things in it. Um, so same thing, keep pick, picking up. So again, I'm thinking about thick on the down, then on the up, thick on the down. I'm gonna add a little curl to that one. So. I, these look really close, so I need to start adding in a little bit more yellow. And if you want, you can also have a, got a, a practice sheet next to it. So now I wanna start to transition into, let's see, let's add a little bit more. So you can decide how quickly you want to transition from color to color. And I love watercolors because you can just overlap it a little bit. A, B, C, D, E, F. I need to get this alphabet right. <laughs> it's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Never know what order they come in. I can't mess this up. Okay. Um, it's a, if, you, if, you're, if you've been with us and you watched the love, <laughs> Love more, worry less. <laughs> um, I got the quote wrong. So that's why, that, otherwise I wouldn't, we wouldn't make that joke. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So now what I wanna do is I want to start to transition a little bit more. So I'm gonna move, a, spin my palette a little bit. So I wanna get more to the yellow. So here's an option you can do. You can decide well, I'm just gonna use this as an example. No, I'm not, because I wanna pretend like I didn't do that and I wanna show you guys. If I decide, let's see, if I'm already at this color and I think, okay, what letters do I have next? I need to be able to see. So you can decide, maybe you want your I or your J to be the strongest yellow. So what I suggest to do is decide that color first or decide that letter first. This is orange. So also what I'm doing is because I want the strongest yellow and I don't want it to be affected or tinted at all, I'm going to 
try and get as much color off. So whenever you do this, don't stab into this and bend it. What I suggest to do is go on the belly of it and just roll into it. Wow, this. You have so much. Is it from when you did the other project? Maybe, well I cleaned it. Dang, well, okay. That just goes to show how long the colors will last. Yeah, these are great. I love them. Um, there we go. It might take you a little bit longer. Hmm. Okay. We're going to experiment. It might... Let's see. Oh, it's fine. Okay, so I'd experiment. That's weird. Okay. So to keep it similar to this, I'm going to decide that I want my J to be solid yellow. So thick on the down, then on the up. I realize you guys might not be able to see that because it's so bright. Okay, that's probably better. So that's my solid. Oh, I did my J differently. It looks great if you want to use that brighter shade. Oh, it does? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just don't want to blind in the one. <laughs> um, is okay so I did that so now I'm gonna work backwards and I'm going to take my strong yellow and just pick up there's a little tiny bit of orange did you know so ever so slightly I added a little bit color and if you look at that it's just a little bit warmer of a yellow so it's starting to get more of like a mustard type of yellow so that was what I did here. So I'm going to do that for my eye. And then I'm going to keep moving along this way, maybe pick up a little bit more of the orange. Maybe a little bit more. H. Okay. So thick. So. That's a little bit too light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sh pick up just a little bit of my magenta. And if you end up getting too much, it's okay. Just add this back in. So you're kind of being a little magician and mixing up some color. So yeah, that's a little bit darker. A, B, C, E, F, D, A, B, C, wow, E, F, G. So G's right here. I had to do that. Um, I, so I need to mix a color from here that's a little bit darker than this and a little bit lighter than this. Doesn't need to be exact. Also, don't be, I know that I, I want to take this time just to show you all because I know color theory is something that maybe you haven't, if you haven't taken an art class, you not, might not be super familiar with, but it's so much fun because you have so many variables that you can create or different colors you can create. So there we go. Here we see. Uh, okay. So here's my backward C shape. So I'm going to go thin on the up thick on the down, slowly get to the tip. Oh, well, there was a lot of room over there. It's okay, I'm just gonna thicken this up. Okay, sweet. Now, I'm gonna leave my K blank because I wanna do my gold at the very end. So now we're gonna transition from yellow to green. What you can do is, I already have green from when I made it here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my yellow and I'm gonna mix in just a little bit. That was a big transition, a little bit too much. So the green is really strong, so I want to, there we go. L, so thick on the down, ooh, that's a cool color, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit. So now, it might help if you are using a light box to turn it off every so often, just to check in. If you want, you can thicken this back up. Oh, wasn't thinking. 
Well, actually, it's okay because I need to start to transition to get to a little bit darker. So it, watercolors are really cool because if you notice, this was I already did that. But <coughs> if I just overlap a little bit, it's all good. So thin on the up on the down. So I'm going to start to transition more into my green. So I'm just going to pull over a little bit. And so I want you to take it stroke by stroke, thin on the up, thick on the down. Okay, so then this is going to be my full green. Then what you can also do is even though my next color is my straight blue. You can either do the same thing, what I did with the J, where you can start and maybe you pick which cut letter. So I chose the S here, and that will be your straight blue, blue, blah, blue, and you can work backwards. Or I'll show you the other ways. You just slowly start to implement a little bit of blue into it. So you'll notice when I'm dipping in, I'm just ever so slightly getting the tip of it because I don't want to get too much. And you can use the middle also as your mixer. Ooh, Keenan, we're getting close to your favorite color. Yeah. So I'm slowly just starting to transition into straight blue, maybe. You are. So because I think I still have a little bit more time till I get to my straight blue, I'm gonna make my S. Ooh, this is gonna be a good color. Yeah. Okay, so now we're getting pretty close. So that is like a teal color. The, which one of those is your favorite? Or are we not at your color yet? I like the S. Yeah. It's a good color. So the S is just, it's pretty much mainly blue and then just a tint of the green. So it's like a teal. I'm going to give myself some straight blue because I might have mixed it up. There we go. So that is the straight Tahoe blue that came in your box or your kit. Ooh, that one's really pretty. I still think, yeah, this is good. Okay, so now what we have left is transitioning into purple. So I'm going to do the same thing, and if this is my straight blue, I have the purple that we are, this is purple. Yeah, so I have the purple that we already mixed, so I'm going to slowly start to implement and add in a little bit more. So that is like a navy, and then we're slowly transitioning into more purple. So now you're going to start to see how you can create a blue purple or a reddish purple. Thick on the down, thin on the up. The other fun thing that I want, well, I'm not going to do it quite yet, is if you want to, let's see. Okay, so now I want to start adding, so I have my purple, I want to start adding and transition into the magenta, or back to the magenta. Um, this, Ooh, that's so pretty. Okay. What I was going to say is if you want, even though this is one solid color, what you can play with is while it's still wet, go back to your original color and just add a little bit in so it just bleeds in a little bit more to it. So you can play with, it doesn't need to be, if you look at the different versions, which I wanted to show you. The, each color here is essentially a different shade, whereas on this one, I added back in, and I had a little bit from my brush when I did it, because I just did it a little bit quicker. I had a little bit of each color. So this has a little tint of the yellow that went into it. So you can experiment with how you want to do that. You don't have to have one specific 
um, color for each letter if you don't want to and you want it to just blend a little bit more. So I'm going to do that here and how did I do this? Curve up. So instead of creating the color on here, I'm just picking up a little bit of the color and it will blend out like that. So you can see that I, it naturally blended. So you can either add it at the end or you can just do it and pick it up and then go for it. So. That Z is cool. Yeah? yeah. You like the blending of it? Save. Also, the project before this, which was Love More, Worry Less, we were talking a little bit more about blending if you want to experiment and play with that. Um, maybe... I'm going to show you how to blend. While that's drying, I'm going to show you how to mix the gold now. So gold, wow, I need to, I should have grabbed a bigger paper towel. Um, okay, final step. This is gold gouache. I'm going to make myself a home for my gold. Okay, gold, so gouache is essentially a more thicker version and opaque version of watercolors. So you'll notice this is your gold and it's not liquid. It's more of a paste-like. So this, you can't buy specifically, you can buy the Windsor Noon tubes. Do I have one? Let's see really quickly. Um, the tubes you can buy, but this is our team wanted to give you some for um, the box. And do I have any? Oh, yes. Yes. So if you're wondering, this is what the tube looks like. So the brand that we're using is Windsor New, and there's a couple different brands. Um, but that's what, that's what this is. And then you got a little... A, a big squirt of it, so you got a good amount. Um, you don't need that much, and so what I suggest to do is you can use the bottom of your brush and you just scoop, you actually don't need that much, and scoop it out. And so you'll see how thick this paste is. So what we need to do is we need to water it down a little bit so that you can paint with it. I'm going to use this because it's cleaner. You need clean water. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> um, this is actually, I should be, yeah. You just need a little bit. So you can either use, I also have this, but this is just an eyedropper. You don't have to have that. So I don't want to show doing that. Oh, well, got cold everywhere. Okay, so I'm just dipping my brush in here and then I'm just gonna rub into the gold. So you really don't need a lot of water. The thing is that if you put too, if you use too much water, it will become too watery. So let's, I wanna show you so then you can see if it happens to you that you can fix it, it's not a bad thing. But let's pretend that I had a little bit more over here and I added way too much water. it would look like that. So you can't really see it. So it's a lot more transparent. So if you notice that happens, just add a little bit more gouache to it. It's okay. And we're only doing one letter for this one, for this project. We'll be doing gold a little bit more, but that's probably a better realm. The opposite end of it I wanna show you is if you don't add enough water, it will look like that end. So it'll look streaky like that. So that, to remedy that, is you do add a little bit more water. So those are the two extremes. So again, <laughs> showing you the two extremes, and let's find the happy medium. Um, so it's good to experiment and figure out. Yeah, I need a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to stick with the same guy so that it has the same thickness. 
Oh, okay, final step. Okay, let's do this. When you are doing this, if you want to practice, go for it. Wow, I should have mentioned that because these are so much bigger, they take up and they just suck up a lot more of your paint. So I'm gonna go back and I need to redo my thing and make more gold with this one. And when I'm doing this, I'm rolling into the palette. Okay. Strong on the down. K's, actually that's funny, I'm doing a K. Um, K's are an interesting letter because you have a down, technically you have a down, technically you have a down. I realize that's backwards for them. I'm gonna do it here. Three downs. Technically you have three downs. So if you think about it, you have three downs. What I like to do is I like to do a strong and thick down as my base and my stem, if you think about it. And then the other two ones, I make just a little bit more of a medium. So I'm not going light, but I'm not going super hard. So I go a little bit in between. And then on this last down, what I like to do is I like to go thin and then thick and then back to thin. So it creates this kind of variance within it, even though, like I start said, you have three technical downs. So you can experiment with how you like to draw the Ks. Keenan's got it down. Those are good Ks. And if you're looking at this, so I noticed that I need to still add a little bit more water. Okay, I think that looks good and feels good. I can do it. I was gonna trace it. Um, okay. When you were doing this also, know that it sucks up a little bit more because it's the watercolor paper. So you might need to, if you need to go over it a couple times, that's totally okay too. So I'm going to take up this space. So I'm gonna go all the way up here. And then I'm gonna add a little loop to this one. Color that in, come around, and create. Oh, my loop got a little, it's okay. Blended together. There we go. Oh, fun. Can you see it shimmering? Yeah, it's very shiny. <laughs> um, okay. That was your last step. So what's cool is that when you're looking at this, let me take it off here. You can frame this or maybe you want, if you want to add vines around it or you can add like a little, oh, you know what would look really cool, Keenan? What? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna improvise again. Nice. Well, if you don't frame this, well actually it'll still work if you frame it, but I was gonna say what's really cool, since I have more gold left, Let's just not let it go to waste. I'm gonna add a gold border to your present. So what I'm gonna do is, I this is a scratch piece of paper, so I'm just gonna draw a line, oops. So I'm just using the belly of this. Oops, maybe you're only getting a gold bottom. <laughs> Because I think I'm going to run out. I don't want to use... Well, maybe I'll use... Oh, you can make it all three, four different colors. Ooh, that'd be neat. I don't know. I like that gold bottom. Oh! Cool. Fun yeah. random tip that I want... <laughs> that you guys can experiment with. Dang. Okay, that needs to dry. So, there we go. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um... There's a, there was a lot of different little lessons with this, within this bigger lesson. I just want you guys to complete this. Have fun, like I said, making something with your hands, with your own hands. If you have paint all over like me, it's okay. It happens all the time. Um, I'm excited to see what you guys create. So we have a Facebook group that you can join if you're not a part of it already. It's called Let's Make Art Lettering. And in that, there's a community of other lettering artists. We're all lettering artists. I'm just going to say that. Even what, whether you've been doing this, this is your first time or this is your hundredth time. 
We're all in this together. Um, so join the Facebook group, share what you create. I think that's the beautiful part of it is we want to create a community where you feel safe and you can share what you create. You're not going to be judged at all. We all have rainbow letters, so it'll be cool. Um, and then, like I said, we have a tutorial every week. So next week we'll be doing a new project. And I just hope you guys have fun. Thanks for being here. Bye, everyone.